everyone. Hello. Happy Thursday, Friday Eve, y'all. I hope you're ready to make an amazing last minute peekaboo Christmas card. Y'all, I think you are going to be obsessed with this card. This was something that I actually created this card thinking that this was something that we might do. We were kind of unsure on if we were even going to add this in, but I'm so glad that we did because look, y'all, look how cute this is. Oh like, goodness. and it's so easy to recreate. All you need is cardstock and adhesive. I mean, what? It's so cute. So, drop me an emoji if you are here. We are doing this. Um, it's old school today. It's old school. <laughs> I was not here yesterday, and um, Tanner and Court are traveling today, and Alicia, um, her babysitter, is not feeling well, so she's at home with the kiddos today. So it's just, it's just me and Sadie with you guys here today, old school. But I think you are going to be so obsessed with this card. We are going to be doing print and cut today, but know that this is not necessarily something that. You don't have to print and cut if you don't have the capabilities to do this. You could actually do this like writing this on the piece of paper and then cutting this out. But I wanted to do a print and cut. So just know like there's a couple different ways you can do this. But we, what we're going to do is we're going to build this card from start to finish. You all are going to know exactly how to make a card in Design Space. I'm going to teach you how to size, score, all of this good stuff. Hey guys, I see you all dropping your emojis for me. Um, but before we get started, just wanted to let you all know if we have any new friends here with us today, we are still running our $75 off our annual membership sale. Um, that is where you are going to get $75 off the price. You're gonna get to craft with us for a year. Not only that, but you get grandfathered in, and y'all, this is our lowest price we ever do. You get grandfathered in for years to come, plus you get the 30 days to master your Cricut work printed and shipped workbook sent to you for free. So you actually get a physical copy of that, which I'm, I love, I'm obsessed with. I really think if you all have been fence setters, maybe you've been watching our YouTube channel for a while, and you're just like, I don't know, now is the time to hop on over that fence, join us, craft with us for, the, for a year. You've already made an investment with your Cricut machine. Why not go ahead and invest in yourself so that you don't let it sit there? You don't want it to just sit there, collect dust. You want to, you, you need to use it. You've already spent so much money on that. But if you are still like, ah, I don't know, I would like to look at the website a little bit first and kind of check you guys out, don't worry, you can craft with us for a dollar. We do have our dollar deals going on too right now where you can join us for a dollar. You get 20 downloads. That comes to five cents a download. That's insane, first that of all. That's crazy. I mean, what? Who are we? But not only that, but you get full access to our website for seven days. And then if you don't cancel after that seven days, then you do become a monthly member at $27.99. But y'all, that monthly membership is just as worth it. I mean, you get access to thousands of cut files, hundreds of fonts, commercial licensing for anything that we have on our website, which is crazy, plus full access to our resource library, our Makers Gonna Learn Facebook family, who we love. I'm not even gonna call it our friends. Like, that's our Makers Gonna Learn Facebook family. Oh, for like, sure. anytime we need help with something, we go to our Facebook family, our MGL Facebook family, and we ask questions, and just like family does, they help us out. So that is so worth it. Love that. So now that you've listened to my spiel, let's go ahead and go overhead and talk about the supplies that we're gonna need today. So starting off, you guys can see we have cardstock. Now, you don't have to use glitter cardstock if you don't want to, but I mean, who doesn't love some shed free glitter cardstock? I mean, come on, this blue is like my fave. I'm obsessed with this blue and this red. Oh my goodness. I mean, I'm not a red girly. Let's I'm just go ahead either. and put that out there. I like it. It's not my favorite like color out of all the colors, but y'all this red, I will go for this red glitter every single time. It's so stunning. It's just like so, there's so much depth to it, which I love. 
So this is, if you all follow her, if you don't, go ahead and give her a follow, Miss Ashley Falco. You can find her on Instagram. I think she does a few YouTube videos as well. Celebration Warehouse cardstock, hands down, our favorite cardstock. We decided to marry one single brand of cardstock back at the beginning of this year, beginning of 2023, and we found it. Not only is her glitter cardstock the best and cuts black butter and shed free, but her regular cardstock is also to die for. So, um, Celebration Warehouse, Ashley Falco cardstock, check that out. It is linked down below. Guys, we do not get any commission from her. By the way, if you use code MGL, um, I think you get 20% off your order if she doesn't already have a sale. Now, if she has a sale going on, normally her sales are really good, so we, you don't stack. But we decided to take zero commission from her. We are giving all of the um, discounts to our followers, to our friends and family because we don't want the kickbacks from this. We just wanted to rep a really good cardstock brand and give you guys all of the discount so you all get 20%. Normally it would be you all get 10% off, we get 10% kickback. We don't do that. You all get 20% off. MGL, use it. Don't don't let that go to waste. Her card stock phenomenal. Actually, I I think my favorite color of her plain card stock is that ivory. Oh it is goodness. like the best color ivory, y'all. It is my perfect ivory. But anyway, that's what we're gonna be using today. And then of course, we do have our ATG gun. This is just double-sided adhesive. You guys don't have to use the ATG gun. You can buy those one-off uh, double-sided adhesive, the tape runners. Um, we do absolutely adore this one. If you are a big paper crafter, invest. That's all I have to say, invest, if you're a paper crafter. Um, I've also heard some barely it's like barely art anyway there are lots of different great adhesives out there this one we are going to use to attach the glitter to this main but we are going to be using the zig two-way pin to attach the top here this white piece to the glitter and the reason being is because this scotch atg gun doesn't really like stick very well to this glitter but we are, the Zig two-way glue is great for the glitter, attaching something on top of the glitter. So we are going to be using that. You guys use whatever um, adhesive that you love the best. It's one of those things that we all have our favorites. We all have things that we go to every single time. Ours is just the ATG gun and two-way. I'm not saying that there's not better products out there. We actually be, we're planning on testing out some other adhesives. So. Um, just know we'll, we'll probably be doing that pretty soon. What refills do you use to use in the ATG gun? Um, honestly, Belinda, this is, pr I don't even think this is the name brand because I've never seen that white. Um, but I also can't tell you what brand that is. Normally, I'm pretty sure we do use the scotch with the ATG, but... This does not look like scotch, I'll be real honest. And I don't know what it is. I just know that someday, one day I came to work and it was refilled, whether it was Tanner <laughs> that refilled it or Alicia, I don't know because I'm not good at it. So, mystery. <laughs> true story, I'm, I'm the worst at it. So I really don't know, but let me, I'll try to look into that and see if we can figure that out for you, okay? Um, so other than that, we are going to be using a scoring stylus today. We love using the scoring stylus over the scoring wheel. And let me tell you why. Because when you use a scoring wheel, you actually have to, and we'll go ahead, go to our camera number three. When you use a scoring wheel, because we're going to be using our fine point blade. If we use a scoring wheel, we have to take this fine point blade out put the scoring wheel in, close it back, and then do all this stuff. But if we use our scoring stylus, we can pop that bad boy in right there, clamp her down, and it does it all in one pass and we don't have to change anything out. So we do love using the scoring stylus. So we're gonna use that today. 
And then of course we have, um, this is a standard grip mat. I may actually run and get a light grip mat because this is a new standard grip mat and I'm afraid it might be a little sticky, but um, actually there's one in the floor. There's a standard grip in the floor that I don't think is as sticky. Um, light grip, well used, well loved standard grip. You all know the drill. Check your mats by how sticky you are. Sticky they are, not you. Hope you're not sticky. <laughs> how sticky your mats are. Um, but with paper, I would suggest a light grip or a well-loved standard grip. And then finally, we are going to use our reverse tweezers. And these are gonna come in really handy when it comes to adding glue to our little cut out trees in our heart. It's gonna make all the world of difference. So I love that. But with all of that being said, let's go ahead and hop over to our share screen to design space and let's start the designing process so first thing i'm going to do i'm going to come over here and find my there it is christmas card and then customize so first thing you're going to want to do you can see here once it pulls up you see we have our card we have our bases here. So we're gonna scroll over. And first thing you're gonna want to do is you are going to want to determine what size card you want, okay? I decided to go with a five by seven card. You can go with a smaller card, whatever. Five by seven is a pretty standard. It's the larger card. It is a, like it will fit a picture in there. Um, I think a five by seven is a really great size for a Christmas card. So you can put like family pictures in there and things like that. Um, so what we're gonna do to start out with is we are going to build our base, okay? Chris says, is there a way in Design Space to have it know to use a scoring stylus and not the wheel? I get frustrated always having to tell it to use the stylus and not the wheel. Chris, I don't think that there is like a setting, but you know, now that you've said that, let's go ahead and go to our settings and see if we can um, change it to like generally always use the stylus. Normally, if you have a maker, it automatically reverts to the wheel and you have to tell it the stylus, but let's just see, for to, to answer your question, let's look in our settings. So custom material settings, machine care, calibration. We don't need any of that. I'm just trying to see if I can, if there is a place where I can default, um, Hmm, load type. You can set your defaults for an explore, but we're using a maker. Um, load type, print and, actually, let's go ahead and change this because print and cut page size, size I want it to be eight and a half by 11, not tabloid. Notifications, you can turn on, on and off notifications here. System, so, I'm not seeing a place here for um, to change your settings to always do the stylus instead of the wheel if you have a Maker or a Maker 3. Um, so you just have to manually change it any, any, like every time you go in there. So anyway, back to building our card. We're gonna start with a basic shape and we're gonna start with a square. Y'all know it comes in as a two by two square. So this is where you are going to, de to determine how, what size you want your card to be. Like I said, we I wanted it to be a five by seven. So to get a five by seven card, we have to double the width. Because if we just go ahead and come in here and put in five by seven, and we put a score line down the middle, that's gonna give us a two and a half by seven card. So you have to double the width here. So because we're doing a five by seven, we want it 10 by seven here. So we're gonna type in 10 and then tab over to seven. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and change the color. This is going to be the base of our card, okay? Um, from there, we want to put a score line down the middle because we want it to crease right in the middle. So when we fold it, it's a perfect five by seven card. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here to shapes. I'm going to grab this line it comes in as a two and a half inch line and we're gonna change it to the same height as our card, 
which is 7. So I'm going to make it 7. Here you can see that it is the same size. It is a, it does automatically come in as a score line up here in the operations. So you do not have to change it. But what you need to do is select both your score line and your square. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to a line and we want to center that. So once that is centered perfectly, what we're going to do is come over here at the bottom right of your screen and we are going to click attach. So now you have the base of your card. Super simple, right? So now what we want to do is we want to create the blue layer that's going to go on the front of our card. Same thing, we're going to grab our shape, going with the square just because it's going to fit really nicely here. Now, if you want to go ahead and type in a, some dimensions, you can do that. Or, you know, you can just play around with this one. This one is one where you don't have to be very specific. You just have to get a general idea of where, how large you want it. So this is about a four and a half um, by a little over six and a half. So that is, we'll change this to blue. And that's all you have to do for your glitter layer. Super, super hard, right? So we're already halfway, halfway through. Now we are going to build our very top layer. So once again, grabbing our square, we're gonna bring it in here. Now I do want there to be a border of blue glitter around my very top layer. And we're just going to size it here. Once again, if you want to get very specific, you can, but it's not necessary. So now we have our very top layer. Now is going to be the fun part where we're going to start building our trees and our words and everything else that's going to go on our card. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hop back over to Cricut Design Space and we're going to first download the text that we're going to be using. And today we're going to be using the Sienna text, y'all. This is like it is one of my so favorites beautiful. of our new texts. So to download a font from Design Space, you're going to click the arrow pointing down. We're going to double click that, open it up. We're going to this OTF font. We're going to double click that and then install it on your computer. So Holly said, can you do an inset? Holly, yes, you can do an inset. And let's go back to Design Space. So Holly asked, can you do an inset on this? Now, on your first card, no. Like if we wanted to just do our blue layer, let's say we, pick, we chose this card. If we went to go do an inset on this, it's going to do it Actually, it does it on both sides. <gasps> Add oh that to the gosh. hack book. I didn't know you could do that. It splits it perfectly. It splits it with the uh, with the score line. Oh, y'all! Oh my goodness. So let's do a negative point two five. Ah! <laughs> wow! But now, okay. So now they're together, but can I contour out one side? Yes. Oh my goodness. Amazing. That was so fast. That was so fast. What? <laughs> and now we're going to do another inset. 0.25. Apply. What? So there you have a perfect, if you wanted to do it that way, you can. That is much quicker. I mean, you, I thought about it that way, but the way my brain worked is I was just going to build on those layers. But I do like the inset, and I did not even realize that if you did an inset with a score line down the middle that it would separate it. That's wild. That's why I didn't do it the first time, because I didn't think that that score line would separate it. So yes, Holly, you can do insets. <laughs> Beautiful. So now that we have our insets, 
and we have selected, so now it's a perfect four by six. So we're, it's not even like we have the four by six, we have, what's our offset? Four and a half by six and a half, look at that, wow. Okay, so we downloaded the font Sienna back in, on our Makers Gonna Learn website. Now, if you're going to reload and you are working on something, yeah, absolutely, Nancy, go Holly. <laughs> Shout out to Holly. Holly gets all the hacks for today. It's not a Lauren hack, this is a Holly hack. Um, so, if you are going to, once you have downloaded a font onto your computer and it's not in Design Space, for those that don't know, you have to go to View and Reload Design Space or you can exit out and come back either way. View Reload is so much easier. I'm not going to do that strictly because I'm pretty sure we have this font on our computer. We do. Here it is. Beautiful. And then we are going to type out our little sentiment for our card. Um, and I'm going to type it out and then I'm going to bring in the trees so, and so we can like go ahead. Um, for this card, may hope fill your heart this holiday season. Yes. Now, I'm just gonna put this over here. Y'all, we're gonna work on it. It does not look good. It's touching. We're gonna move it around. Don't worry, we'll get there because we need to put our trees in first. So, back over to the Makers Gonna Learn website. The, tr or the file that we're gonna be using today is the Layered Trees and Deer file. We're just gonna be using the trees. We're not, we're gonna contour this guy out, okay? So to download it, we're gonna click download. We're going to open it up in our downloads, double click it, make sure that gets unzipped. Back over to Design Space, we're gonna go to Upload, Upload Image. Y'all know that I love to drag and drop from our finder. We're using the SVG today, so I'm gonna drag that, drop it here. Boom, upload. So easy, so, so easy. So we're gonna select that, add that to our canvas. And from here, you can see that we have everything together. Now, I only need one of these trees. So I'm actually going to contour and hide all contours. And that's it. Now you can resize this tree as big or as little as you would like. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start placing these. We're gonna duplicate. You can duplicate and resize, but we're just going to be placing them. Um, three is a good amount to do, and I'm gonna make this one a little smaller and put him like over here. Actually, the smaller one I think needs to go in the back because it seems further away. So we're just gonna place them. But here's the catch. You want to place these with the peekaboo card. You want to place them where they are not touching because what we're going to do, once this has been cut, we are going to take what this, what Cricut cuts out and use these pieces so there is no waste. We're not gonna be wasting here. And we're gonna layer them to make it look like a forest. So some of them are gonna look blue, some of them are gonna be white. You're still gonna be able to see them. It gives it a very 3D effect that I love. So we are just going to take each tree individually and start slicing it out of our offset, okay? So we have our tree here. We need our white offset. Okay, we got that. Why is it doing? What? Why is it so big? Anyway, and sauce. So then we're gonna get rid of both of these little trees so you can see the blue. Then we're gonna select the other tree. Now it is behind it, but you all can see, I can bring it back to the front. So select that tree and your white offset. We're gonna slice that out getting rid of these. So we see the blue through. Once again, bringing this guy to the front so you can see. And from the layers panel, selecting our tree 
and our white offset and slice. And then back up here, we can get rid of both of these trees. And that is what we are wanting to see. You want to make sure that you see the blue layer through your top layer, okay? So now that we've done that, we have our text here. I'm bringing this to the front so we can see it. I am gonna go ahead and change it to black because I'm very bad about forgetting to change because it's, you all who have been around know that Cricut likes um, gray as the standard color. Um, Lauren doesn't. So what we're gonna do now, and I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see, we are, I have this sentiment in three different, um, three different lines. That's the word I was trying to think of, lines. I couldn't think of lines. So what I'm gonna do now is go to advanced. We are ungrouping to lines, okay? So now I can choose this line, move it over here, move your heart here, and holiday season, really wherever you feel like you want to move your words, your sentiment. Um, but this is about where I want it. We might move this season maybe over here. There we go. Oh, nope, I don't like where that Y, I like it being, there we go, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, Dawn, we are live. We are 100% live. So, what we're going to do now is because I want the word heart to be a different color, what I'm going to do is we are going to go to advanced. Now I'm going to ungroup to letters. So that's going to make all of these letters it's their own separate pieces. So I want to take the letters for heart, H E A R T and I'm just going to change the color to red. Can you even see that it's red? I th you can, so it, you can barely see it, but it's red. But I promise it's gonna show up a lot more when we flatten it, okay? So now, what I want to do is I want to select everything here on this layer, on this white layer. So we did ungroup this to letters. Y'all, don't come in here and try to move all of this around. First of all, it's not going to be easy. Um, I mean, you can, if you want to, select your card and select your blue layer and move those out of the way if that would make it easier for you. And at that point, you can drag and drop here. If not, you can start, you can select everything from your layers panel, okay? Just select all of this, whichever one you want, okay? And we are going to select all of this here and then we are going to flatten. So now you can see the red really shows up. It looks so much better. So now that we've done that, it looks kind of weird because you can see the lines through some, but you can't. But bringing it over here, we can line this back up and look how beautiful that looks. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we are going to add a little heart now, you can use the heart that's on, um, that there is in the basic shapes with design space. Um, the heart that I use is actually a Maker's Gonna Learn uh, cut file. Um, yes, Donna, you can see the grid. Yes, with that. We're using a Maker's Gonna Learn font, um, or font, heart. This is the heart, if you just type in heart, this is the heart that I, I just love this heart. Um, it is already downloaded on our design space. So going back to Cricut, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to upload, view all. And for those that didn't know, once you have downloaded something and use it in design space, you can just go back and search it and it's gonna be there. I could probably guarantee that this heart has probably uploaded to, there's all kinds of stuff that we've downloaded multiple times, okay? So, we're just going to add this to Canvas. View. Where'd it go? There it is. Oh, it's over here. We're doing this one. We're doing this guy today, okay? And then, I don't want, I want the inside gone because I wanted a solid heart, so I'm gonna go to Contour, 
we're going to contour out the middle. We want to contour out the middle and then from there we're just going to size it however large we want it. We'll zoom in or small. You can make it big, you can make it small, you can do multiple. And we're just going to kind of going to put it where we think it would look good on our card. And then, you know, if you wanted to, you can change it to red to check it out. And y'all, that is it. Now, that seems like a lot in design space. I understand completely, but it's really not that hard. So, now that we have finished that in design space, I'm actually going to hide all of this over here. Not going to use that. We're going to use everything that we created today. And we are going to go to make it. So the first thing is it's going to want to print this out. Um, I'm actually going to start with the base of the card. And the reason being is because I'm going to go um, after this starts, I'm going to run out to our printer and I'm going to, I said I wasn't going to use that mat. I said I was going to use this one if I can reach it. Oh, it's not sticky at all. See, this one's a little not sticky. This one might be a little too sticky. We're going to go with the sticky. And we're going to pray that it doesn't rip our paper. We're not going to bray it down too much. So we're just going to place our paper down on our mat. Bray it down. Just like so. And then we're going to go to continue. We are using our maker today. And I am cutting this on medium cardstock. Now, here's where it's going to tell you to load your scoring wheel. And I was watching, I was reading the comments as I was teaching you guys, and I saw that we had a, I wouldn't say, it wasn't a heated debate. But we had some people in the comments that were saying, we love our scoring wheel. That's great, because you know what? I tend to agree with you that the scoring wheel does give me a better score. Let me say that again. The scoring wheel does tend to give me a better score line. And in some instances, I need that better score line. This is just a basic card. We just need it scored down the middle. The reason that I like the scoring stylus is because I don't have to worry about switching everything out and we can get it done all in one fell swoop, okay? So to edit the tools, we'll go back to design space. All you have to do is click this green button. It says edit tools. And we want to change it from a scoring wheel to a scoring stylus. Yes, a scoring wheel is recommended because you're right, it does give you a better score. But if you have a scoring stylus, just know that it works just as good. I, I, I still like a scoring stylus. So we're gonna apply because that's what we're using today because we'd want it to be user friendly for all of our friends, whether you have an explorer or a, uh, or a maker, okay? So, Donna, if your scoring tool always pops out, mine does on my maker, it's because of the housing. If you'll call the, um, if you'll cr call Cricut Support, they might can help you unless it's out of warranty. I don't know if they, I thought Alicia's might have been out of warranty when hers popped out and they sent, they told her what to do to fix it. I don't, I don't know, but it might not, it might be worth it to call, might be worth it. But yes, mine does the same thing. It pops out every time, so I have to use the scoring wheel. So I feel your pain for sure. So we're just gonna load this in there. And then from there, we are going to let that cut and score. And while that's doing that, I'm going to run out here to our printer and put some cardstock in the printer. While she's putting cardstock in the printer, are you guys ready for Christmas? Can you believe Christmas is literally 11 days away? My mind is blown. Have you guys finished your Christmas shopping? Have you sent out all your Christmas cards? I must know. Oh, I was like, what is it doing? <laughs> Okay. I feel like that went really slow. Was that just me? It was pretty slow. <laughs> okay. 
So once that's done, we're just gonna bring that out and I'm going to unload this. Going with gravity. Oh, rip that. Oh, so um, we were talking about Christmas in here while you're gone. Okay. It's 11 days away. Oh, don't remind Some me. Some of these people have not done any shopping. <sighs> oh my goodness. So we're gonna go ahead and send this to printer. We are using our 8100 series today. Um, I'm not adding the bleed because it's white, but we are using system dialog. We always use system dialog, sending that, pulling it back, feeding from rear tray, best quality. Only way to do that, okay? And print. Can you make these cards from your iPad? Yes, you can. Um, it's just a lot of design space work, so we don't do um, crafting from the iPad a lot. Um, most of our design space work is done from, actually pretty much all of our design space work is done from a computer. But I'm assuming, yes, it would, it's the same process. The buttons are gonna be different. They're not gonna be in the exact same place, but you're still gonna have most, much of the same like functionalities, okay? Um, you can set your Epson to always use rear tray if you set your defaults on your printer page just so you know. So I'm gonna go check this, see if it printed. It did. So we're gonna bring this back in. Now, I know you may be thinking, but Lauren, where are your trees? Where did they go? They're there. They are there. They just didn't print, because it was a cutout portion. <gasps> Okay, no, I didn't. I thought I forgot. I flattened. We're good. Okay. <laughs> I was having a little bit of a panic attack there for a minute. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to panic. We're just going to keep going. So, once that has printed, we are going to load this guy into our machine. Still using medium cardstock. And we're going to go. We're gonna go. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to fold our card on the score line. Just like that. Now if you want to bone folder, squeegee, whichever, we're just making a hard crease for our card while our cricket is thinking. Because really there's nothing much else we can do until that's done. Um, <laughs> Renee, that gasp, if you only knew how many times I've done that while cricketing. <laughs> if you do not do that gasp while cricketing, um, at are least once human? a week, if you are an avid, if you use your <laughs> cricket a lot, then what are you doing? Because I need to know, because it never fails that I am gasping like, <gasps> Did I do that right? Am I gonna mess something up? Still yet, still yet. Um, Kathy says I'm making most of the presents this year. I love a good handmade, uh, a real, like a good handmade present is like yes. my favorite. Um, thankfully, you still have time to continue making your presents. Carol says needs project ideas. What are you, what, what are you needing? And let's see if we can help you, Carol. Um, and we'll see if we can help. If you're talking about like gifts for people, um, then the gas of relief, yes. Uh-huh, yeah, that's it. Um, Elena, you have missed us building our card, but no fear, you can go back and rewatch. Um, we are just now starting the assembly portion of our card. Um, so you all can see here, it has cut the trees out. It, for some reason, like, drug a little bit with this little guy, but we can fix it. So once again, going with gravity, we are unloading our paper. And y'all know I probably should have used a lot grip mat for this, but lo and behold, what did I do? Y'all do what I say, not as I do. This was a new standard grip mat and I literally said, Probably should get a light grip mat. 
Guess what I didn't do? Didn't get a light grip mount, that's for sure. <laughs> so, for some reason it tried to rip right here. Hmm. We're just gonna take care of that right there. Beautiful. Now, we need to keep our little trees. We are keeping those, okay? We're gonna keep those, so I am being easy with them. And we're gonna keep these little guys right here. Lay them there. And then we are gonna start, it's telling us to start with our red. We'll just go ahead, since it's already there. Putting our red down on our mat, changing our material from medium cardstock to glitter cardstock, like that. Loading it in to our Cricut. Um, and then pressing play. I'm reading, let's see, shop all year. Um, <laughs> Jen says I'm a multiple gas person, amen. Hashtag retweet. Um, yes, you can try to order a new housing for Clamp A if it's out of warranty. Great suggestion, Jennifer, love that. Um, Carol got a new heat press. Do not Ooh. be intimidated, first of all. Congratulations. Love that. Love that. Um, so now we've got, hold on guys, it's getting stuck. There we go. Now we've got our heart. This is the last portion of our card that we have to cut before we assemble. So mm -hmm. let me see. This is a five. That's going to be too skinny. Wow, it's going to be too short. I was just trying to see if I could save some cardstock, y'all. Ooh, that will work in that corner. That'll be perfect. Perfect. Y'all know I love to try to save, save some material whenever I can. So now that we've got that loaded, Lord, if I can pick it up on my nails. <laughs> That's the one thing about nails that I am not necessarily a fan of. It makes it hard to pick a lot of stuff up. I wish I could have long nails, but I play guitar, so they have to be short and nubby. Excuse <laughs> me, Miss Dolly Parton plays with her long nails. Well, she and tunes she uses her guitar them as picks. special way. What? She tunes her guitar special way so she can do that. Oh, I didn't so realize that. she like changes the notes. I only know that because my dad worked with her for a long time. Okay. So she would change the tuning of her guitar so she could like put her finger on one and play a whole chord instead of having to play like multiple yeah, like, like, fingers. I, I've tried at one point to play yeah. guitar and it just wasn't, I like, I, I can hear music. I can't, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. You can't multitask. Well, Good no, guess. it was the calluses that really got me. Yeah. That I wasn't a fan of. It's it was painful, the calluses. But once you get over it, it's like you could just play all day long and never hurt. I also attempted to play banjo at one point. <laughs> Can you I got pretty it? good at the finger roll at, there for a little bit. <laughs> I mean, not, not I say pretty stop good. And think of Lauren playing a banjo. That would be so iconic. I mean, I was married to a bluegrass musician. That's true. So. <laughs> Mandolin was never, he is a mandolin master. I, that was never my thing. Yeah. I love listening to it. Too. Okay, off of that. <laughs> uh, yes, Megan, Sadie's dad used to work with Dolly. Actually, Sadie Crazy. is related to the Partons yes. on your mom's my side. My mom is a Parton. Yes, your mom was name. a Parton before she married your dad. Yeah. Yes. It's crazy. I have never met her, but my dad has, so it's pretty cool. Lauren cannot banjo. <laughs> Lauren attempted and was not good at it. Lauren cannot banjo, but Lauren tried. Honestly, there so is funny. very few things under the sun that Lauren would not try to do. <laughs> I love to try new things. That could be a good or bad thing. <laughs> it could be a good or bad thing. Okay, so now we're gonna start the assembly of our card. So first thing we're gonna do with our base is, um, oh wait, real quick, before we go into that, let's talk. Um, hack for nails, keep tweezers with you at all time. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, Jen, I do love my nails. I will never get rid of them. You are right. And I do have a girl who does some beautiful artwork too. Uh, shout out Priscilla. Um, <laughs> let's see. 
I've been watching from the beginning, but I just joined the chat. Hey, Kathy, love to see you here. Um, Donna, I saw your puff vinyl on the sweaters. Chef's kiss, so good. Um, Kim asked, do you recommend putting down a whole sheet on the mat? I usually trim it down. That's really your preference, whatever you want to do. I just like using the whole sheet. That way I don't trim, like if I trimmed three inches down this way and extra over there, like I can still possibly use that sheet for other little tiny things. So um, anyway, that's why I did the whole sheet, but it's really your preference. Like you can do small portions or you can do the whole sheet, either way. So let's go back to assembling. I'm just using my ATG gun on the back of this blue here. On the edges first, and then I'm just gonna put some through the middle here so that it sticks down very well. And then making sure it opens that, yeah. We are just going to line this up and lay it down. So easy, so easy. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to add in our top layer. Now, this is where I said you needed the zig pin because we can put the ATG on the back of this, but for some reason it doesn't stick as well here. So what I'm going to do, we are going to use our zig pin here and I'm just going to add it along the edges. Here. And all along there, and then we're just going to pick it up and lay it down. You really don't need a ton for that. Just make sure you get your edges down really, or like the over in here down really well. So, I mean, y'all, now comes the fun part of building our forest. And you can take your trees, like your big ones, if you want them up this way, down here, we might even grab this little guy, place him like right here. I mean, there's so many different ways you can do this. I mean, you could even hang it off the edge over here if you really wanted to, like that would be cute. But what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take in the pieces that the Cricut cut out, and we're just gonna place them in varying ways on our card. This would even be a really good, um, you could do like foam squares. Actually, I think I do wanna do foam squares. Let me run out here real quick and let me grab a couple of these tiny foam squares so that we can really make it pop off the page. Cause I think that's gonna be super cute. I think these will work. These foam squares are a little bit bigger than I would like, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them down. Cut them down to about half size. And then we're going to place them here and here. And I want to place them on all of the trees before I actually tape them down because I want to kind of arrange them. So whoop, here and here. And then we'll do one for the little tiny tree like this. I think I'm just gonna do one on this guy. Yeah, he just needs one. Okay, so I'm not taking the backers off just yet. Um, let's see. Hmm. I 
I don't want, like, it's, it's just like arranging them how I want them. Hmm. But they're like, you see, do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's like they just, I don't know what I want. It's almost like you need just two of them or something. Yeah, I think I might just use two of them. I don't think I'm going to use all three. I think I'm just going to do like that. It's cute. Beautiful. I love that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off the back here. We're going to place him down here like that and the back of this like this. Beautiful. And I'm actually going to use this other foam square. Is it going to show through on the heart? Oh, no, I can arrange it. I'm, I'm going to put it on the heart, too. And then I'm going to put my little heart up here. And look how cute. <laughs> look at that. That is so cute. The foam squares really do it. I mean, I should have done the foam squares from the beginning. It pops so much more. That looks so good. I know. I mean, they both look good, but this one oh, yeah. looks really good. And it gives it that 3D effect, y'all. That is precious. I mean, if you've not sent out Christmas cards or if you hadn't planned on it, but you thought, well, maybe I'll send some for a, to a few people, this is so easy and really packs a punch when it comes to impact on like how cute, like people, if I got this, I'd be like, wow, that is a very nice card. Oh, but yeah. you all saw how easy it was to recreate this. Exactly. And like, once you make it once in design space, you could just keep duplicate it. out. Yeah. And really and truly, you could make it, you could size this card down to where you could fit two on one 12 by 12 page. Oh, yeah. Like that's crazy. Crazy. Now, I will say if you do the print and cut method, um, it would be, a, you would have to use a quite, like you would have to use some pages because I don't think you could fit more than one on like an eight and a half by 11 this way. But if you wanted to, it would just, the only problem is it would be a lot more work um, to cut this out of HTV. But y'all, did you, I don't know if y'all know that, but you can put HTV on paper. Um, I do think it would be a lot more work. But I mean, a pack of cardstock at Walmart is what? $5 for like quite a few? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot. So I mean, Anyway, it just adds a very nice touch to your Christmas Christmas card giving. So cute. I love it. I love it. So, wow. We're running quite well on time. It's not even 2.30 yet. So, if you all have um, open Q&A, let's open it up to Q&A today. If you all have any questions about the project, maybe you have questions about our membership, BJ says envelope. I mean, we can make one real quick if y'all want to. You could. Okay. <laughs> you talked me into it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, to create an envelope, we do have envelopes on our Makers Gonna Learn website. Let's go over there. Let's type in envelope. Now, an, a, five, a five by seven card fits into a standard like card envelope though. Um, Christina, the Sienna, is that a line font? Um, it would normally be hollow, actually. Sienna is not a single line font. It would be hollow. So, um, we'll make a quick envelope if you want to. This is a pretty standard envelope. Um, foam squares can be bought on Amazon. That's where we buy all of our foam squares. Um, what kind of things can we make for kids? for Christmas besides shirts. Kathy, we'll circle back. We're gonna make an envelope real quick. You can see here we have all kinds of envelopes on our website. Very, They go from very standard to very intricate and they all have inserts which I adore, yes. adore. So I like this one. So what I'm gonna do to download this, we're gonna open that up, double click, open. 
back to design space. We're gonna go to upload and I'm gonna show you guys how you are concise an envelope from our website, finder here, bring this here, envelope SVG, into design space and back. And this is how you're going to be able to size this to fit any card you want, okay? So, we're making an envelope, right? We're not gonna, these are all attached together right now. We don't want to detach them because we want to size them all together. However, we need to know what size this is, okay? Remember I said that our, um, I said that our card was five by seven. So this needs to be larger than five by seven. So let's go to camera one. The way that the envelope is, the card is gonna sit this way in the envelope. So it needs to be seven inches in width, or actually a little bit more than seven. You want it longer and you want it taller. So if you go seven and a quarter by five and a quarter, that will give you, um, that will give you enough wiggle room. So let's go back to design space. So we're gonna, with selecting all of them, we are just going to size this up, okay? And we might not even, because this may not fit. Let's see how big this is. See, that's not gonna fit on a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. And this is not big enough yet to actually fit that card. So let's say this card was, we'll select all of this and we'll make it a four by six, meaning it needs to be an eight, eight by, that'll be fine. So this is closer to a four by six card now, okay? In our minds, in our minds, let's just think. Um, and we're going over here. So we need this envelope, we need this center portion to be, actually this will work. It's a little big. So we're gonna select it all. We're gonna make sure that this envelope fits on a 12 inch, nope. We need it to come down to about 11. I think that will fit. I think that would fit on our 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. It should. So now our middle portion is gonna still fit a four by six card. So let's actually size it down just a little bit more. So this middle portion is what you size your envelope and everything by. So if we have a four by six card, this is bigger than four, longer than six. So this is going to fit a four by six, okay? Yes, an A2 size card is four and a quarter by five and a half. We just did a four by six, it's fine, it's fine. So what you have to do, first of all, this is a basic cut line, it needs to be a score. So we have to change it from basic cut to score. Okay, and now we need to change this square from a basic cut to a score as well. Okay, do y'all see that? Now what I wanna do is I want to ungroup this because this is gonna be cut separate from this. Now that it's ungrouped, I want to select this score line in this envelope, attach it, and select this score line and the outer part of the envelope and attach, okay? Beautiful. Have we had any questions that you've seen about the envelope? I know there's been a lot of conversation about other things. Um, not yet. Okay, beautiful. No. Beautiful. Um, I'm pretty sure live chats, you can go back and rewatch and rewatch the live chat, can yeah, you not? You can. You can rewatch the live chat. Or you can take screenshots True. if you want, if you don't want to lose anything. So yeah, I mean, I can make this envelope for you guys to show you how we put it together. Um, but it's not gonna fit this card. That's gonna be the only problem. It's not gonna yeah. fit this card. But let's go ahead, we'll make one. Why not? I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab some, I'm gonna go grab some card stock for just a second.
Oh no. I'm gonna use this ivory just because I said that I was obsessed with the ivory. And I think I want to make the inside of it this blue glitter. Ooh, that'll be so pretty. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna hide this guy. Cause we don't need him. We don't need him. We're gonna go to make it. Okay, this is telling me that it is on a 12 by 24. I thought that I had, huh. Well, let's go back. I thought it was smaller than 12. It is. Okay, so we're gonna select both of these. We're gonna go down to 11. Let's try that. It's still saying that I have to have it on a 12 by 24. Oh, 11 and a half. I'm a doofus, y'all. I am such a doofus. We're selecting both. We're going down to 11 and a half. There we go. We're still gonna hope. That'll fit a four by six. Barely, but it'll fit. Make it. There we go. Continue. Oop, we're gonna take this off and add our cardstock down. Y'all, this is a bonus. We didn't plan on making an envelope, but you all wanted to see how to make one, and we can. It's very nice to be able to make an envelope, but I also just love buying them, <laughs> personally. And then we are gonna select medium cardstock because we are cutting this. This is just plain cardstock. Loading this in, changing it to a scoring stylus, applying, and cutting. How would you manipulate the envelope templates to fit the stained glass cards? Um, you would manipulate it based on how large your card is. Um, just make sure that middle portion, the scored portion, is big enough, is the same size as your card, or actually about a quarter of, quarter of an inch larger. If you are making envelopes for like five by seven cards, you do have to have 12 by 24 inch card stock or just buy a standard envelope. Um, so, a flat flap envelope would work for the card, huh. Okay, Joanne, how much is the membership and where do I go to get it? That is a great question. I'm so glad you asked. So, right now we are running our biggest sale of the year and I'm gonna pop over here and grab this book real quick to show you. Um, you can actually click, click the link that Sadie dropped for you $75 off of our yearly membership means you get to craft with us for a full year. Love that. We have some big, big things coming up in 2024. Um, but not only that is you get grandfathered in at that price. So meaning if our price changes, which psst, by the way, there's no plan of our price changing in the near future, at least. Um, you never know how things go, but there is no plan. Let me just make that clear. But this is the absolute lowest you can get our membership is with the $75 off using code 75OFF. And plus right now you get the free printed and shipped to you workbook, 30 days to master your Cricut. And we'll go overhead in this workbook. You have so much stuff that you are going to love. You also get videos every day that go along with this. You get instant access to this once you sign up, but you, I mean, it's nice to have a book in your hand. So day two, setting up your machine. Day three, terminology. I mean, y'all, there is so much tour of design space. You are really going to go from a Cricut novice to a Cricut pro in no time with this book. I love it. Absolutely, membership pays for itself with the cut files and fonts. It sure does. It sure does. Um, but we like to add in extra stuff. We have access to re our resource library. You do get commercial use licensing, all of that good stuff, okay? So, this is the outside of the card. Now, 
we are going to cut our inside. And this is a little tip, tippy tip. Let's see, six by seven. I don't think I have a piece that would fit that. I can't, no, no, no. I'm gonna have to get a new piece of, of glitter cardstock. If you are using glitter cardstock and you're wanting to score glitter cardstock, turn it upside down. I mean, this, normally I would tell you to turn glitter cardstock upside down to cut it because if you have like the glitter cardstock that sheds, it just gives you a cleaner cut. But if you score it upside down, you can actually see the score line, whereas before you couldn't. So we are placing that in there with it upside down. I'm actually gonna change the material setting from medium cardstock to glitter, okay? And we've got the edit tools. I wanna go back to a scoring stylus but I'm gonna put it on more pressure just because I want it to score very well. And then we are going to hit the flashing Cricut button. Now, while that's cutting, what you can do is we can start folding our envelope together. So it goes here, this folds up, <clears throat> these flaps, are going to fold in like this. That side and this side. And then before we fold, we're actually, I'm actually going to, and then what it's gonna do is you're gonna ATG that down and this is gonna fold down, but I'm gonna fold this down right now just so that I can, I'll know where to line this up, your insert. Now, if you don't wanna insert, that's it. All you have to do is ATG that together and then you'll glue that shut before you do it and that's all. But if you want to add a little bit of a touch, an extra flair, you can add this insert. Uh, no, I mean, you, I mean, Typically you would mirror if you turn it upside down. This is a standard shape, like it's the same. It's a symmetrical shape, so you don't have to. Um, but if it's not a symmetrical shape, then yes, I would. So this is actually folding in because we're gonna place it down. So I'm gonna fold this this way. And I could see my score line. Beautiful, just like that. So before we glue it all together, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our ATG gun here, here, and here. Whoops, come on. And actually on the top too. Here and here. And then there, we'll add a little bit here. Beautiful. And then we are just going to line up our score lines there. And this is why I love ATG is because I can, if I feel like I've messed something up, place that down just like that. Make sure it folds very nice. Oh my gosh, look at that. Ah, I love it. Beautiful. And then add ATG on our tabs here on the side. Fold this guy up and in. And y'all, you have an envelope. Look how pretty. Now I did get it a little off because that fold line is down a little bit more, but not a big deal. Look how cute. That now, of so course, easy. I said it wasn't going to, I said I was, it wasn't gonna fit. I told y'all it wouldn't, but this will fit a standard like A2 card. But look how cute. That I is love adorable. it. I love the glitter. It's such a fun Yes, pop. yes. And then somebody said if you wanted to, I mean, this wouldn't look good, but that other tree, 
if you wanted to add it after you seal your envelope and you wanted to add the other tree to the outside. That would be cute. That would be very cute. It would be cuter if this was like red. Yeah. But I wasn't like, if it was a brighter red, I probably would have grabbed it. Like if this envelope was red with the blue and like a little white tree on the outside to match this, super cute. So cute. Super cute. But that's, I mean, I don't want, like making envelopes should not be um, intimidating. No. Because it's not. It's not. It's the most intimidating part is going to be, and we'll go back to design space. The most intimidating part is sizing. But I want you all to remember, if you ungroup these and you need to resize it, make sure you select them both and resize together. Because if you resize this one by itself, then this is going to be off and you can see how much, like it just doesn't look right. You know what I mean? So just keep in mind, I'm going to go back, 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 go back, go back, go back, go back to where you were. <laughs> If you resize, resize together, okay? And remember, the size of your card needs to be able to fit inside your score lines. That is the, that's the most intimidating part, but don't let that stop you from making envelopes because it really is that easy. And it does add a little bit of extra flair. And you all are extra, we're all extra here. <laughs> we love to be extra. We love to be extra. We wouldn't be crafters if we weren't extra because we like to make stuff our, like our own, right? Exactly. Right. So, open Q&A time. We are over our 2.30 time limit now, but we can sit here and chit chat and talk and answer questions all you want. Um, yes, Patty, size does matter. <laughs> size surely does matter. <laughs> And one thing you can do if you want to make sure that they stay the same, um, you can, like, once they're here, you can put them, like, this would go about right there. You know, just size them up and down that way. Very easy. Very easy. So, so easy. Well, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, Elena, you better definitely give it a try. I promise you. You're going to be so impressed. Um, do you want to use a lighter weight cardstock for the envelope? So, 80 pounds, your typical um, cardstock is going to work. Now, I will say the glitter inside this does give it quite a bit of weight to it um, because it is a heavier, it's actually 120 pounds, the insert is. Um, but when you start layering cardstock, it is substantial enough. It's actually more substantial than a regular envelope. Regular envelopes are not 80 pound cardstock. I think they lean more toward like 60, if nothing mm -hmm. else. So just using your standard 80 pound cardstock, but know that if you do add glitter inside, it is going to give it a little more weight, okay? Um, if, you ha if I have to uninstall Cricut Design Space and reinstall it, Will I lose the items I have saved? That is a great question. No, you will not because Cricut is a cloud-based program. So everything that you have is going to be stored on the cloud. So it you will if you have to down or delete it and then reinstall it, you won't lose everything. I actually just had to delete and reinstall Design Space on my computer the other day. Um, ATG, is it just quarter inch double-sided adhesive? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. And this one is actually off a little bit and it's really like irritating me, but I can't like fix it because I can't tear the tape, I can't tear the paper or it messes everything up. Um, but it, yes, it does come in different weights. This is a quart, this is, is this a quarter inch? Let's find out. I think so. Is there a way to design cards so that there is writing inside the card as well as the outside? That is a great question. There are a couple different ways you can do that. If you wanted to, you could attach, let's go back to design space. Let's delete this guy out. And let's bring this guy back in. There, there, and there. What's this guy for? I don't know. Where'd you come from? So, what I would do if I wanted to, let's say, um, have writing on the inside, I know that the way we designed this 
we acted like this was the outside of the card and that's fine, not a big deal. If I wanted writing on the inside, what I would do is I would get a sketch font from Makers Gonna Learn. So let's go to our fonts. I'm just gonna type in sketch and let's say, I don't know, Cynthia. I like that one pretty well. You can type in your sentiment. Um, hope you have a Merry Christmas. I would definitely kern my font. Then you can size it down and then add love whoever. And what this would do is you would grab this, attach it, and what that's going to do is it's going to cut out your card, score and write, and then you would fold this left side over top of the right and put this on the outside of that. Okay? So, uh, you can use a foil material for the inset. You sure can. Foiled cardstock is great. Um, yeah, and it does come in larger sizes, but ours is a quarter inch. Um, could you do print and cut on a regular on regular printer paper or color printer paper? Could you do print and cut on regular printer paper and make another layer and attach it? with tape to the inside. Yes, you could do that too. If you wanted, if you wanted to like have another layer in here that's like print and cut friendly, what you could do will detach this, get rid of this. You could take your inset or remember how we did the offset and we went a negative 0.25 and it gave us the two insets. Um, yes, you could, we'll contour one of these out, whatever. Oh, there we go. Um, and then you could put your stuff on this and actually tape it inside the card if you wanted to do print and cut. Absolutely. Um, I'm getting nervous using my Cricut. You make it, Amy, Amy, we do this every single day and we still mess up, but you know what makes you less nervous? Continuing to use your machine and learning and every time you mess up, not letting it get you down. That honestly is what helps me more than anything. Start simple, go from there. Y'all, it's why you make it look everything so easy. It's, it is easy once you learn and understand. And I really think if you've not, if you are a Makers Gonna Learn member and you've not dove into that 30 Days to Master Your Cricut, y'all, what are you doing? You Maybe it. you need a reset. Maybe you need to go back and rewatch. I'm telling you, it is definitely one, definitely one to get, okay? So. I mean, it's called 30 Days to Master Your Cricut master, for a reason. Master. It's so good. Mm-hmm. That's it. I have had so much fun with you guys today. Yes. So much fun. I thoroughly enjoyed making this card with you guys. Y'all even y'all even threw in a little challenge and we made an envelope. This was not on the agenda. <laughs> not on the agenda. But you know what? We mastered, we figured it out. And if you didn't, while we were making it, you can go back and rewatch as many That's times great. as you need. So, um, I hope you guys have an absolutely amazing weekend. If you are crafting and you're part of the Makers Gonna Learn family, drop your stuff in the Facebook group so that we can see it. I love yes. scrolling Facebook and seeing everything you guys create. And if you're not part of the Makers Gonna Learn family, what are you doing? <laughs> Where are you at? Because right now we have the absolute best sale of the year, $75 off, grandfathered in, lowest price, plus you get that 30 Days to Master Your Cricut workbook sent to you. Crazy. So, um, that's all we have for today. I'm so glad you all have been here with us. We will be back with you next week. I think we're coming back with you next uh, Tuesday. Not really sure what we're doing, but I'm sure it's something awesome. Oh, yeah. For Always sure. something awesome around here. <laughs> um, so have a great weekend. I cannot wait to see you guys next week. We will see you later. Bye. Bye.